Hello YouTube and people of the interwebs, welcome back to another Doctor Who news video. Now, for a change, we actually have official news from an official source. So the Doctor Who director of the centenary or centenary or centenary, and who is directing that episode, Jamie Magnus Stone, has done an interview with the Radio Times, and it reveals some very, very, very interesting stuff about the 13th Doctor's regeneration. And the possibility that we won't even see the 14th Doctor in the episode, which, that's a bit mad, but we'll, we'll just dive into the article. Doctor Who director reveals new Jodie Whittaker regeneration details, exclusive. The 13th Doctor has filmed her regeneration, but it'll be a little bit different this time. We're already off to a very ominous start. <laughs> We're also given this new and exclusive picture of Jodie Whittaker, pr presumably from while filming the current specials, which was back in, like, early September time. The article reads that it's no secret that Jodie Whittaker's Time Lord is scheduled to depart Doctor Who this autumn, with the 13th Doctor set to regenerate in a BBC centenary special that may also see the return of Sasha Darwin's master. Now, yeah, this is the info we know so far. I was the one who first made a video about the fact that Sasha Darwin was returning for this episode, thanks to my friend, who would rather remain anonymous, that leaked the pictures of the Master's prop box and all of this on Twitter. That was great fun, but <laughs> yeah. We basically know for a fact that Sasha Darwin is the main antagonist of this special. In the episode The Vanquishers, Time says, like, beware of the forces that mass against you and their master. It doesn't take a genius to work out their master is the, the master. Should I say spy master? I also briefly discussed this in my video the other day, that Joe Martin the Ruth Doctor, or the Fugitive Doctor, whatever you want to call her, she is almost definitely also coming back for this special, because in a Comic-Con panel interview, there's no footage of it because you weren't allowed to record in there, but in a Comic-Con panel interview, her and Sasha discussed having a scene together, or something along those lines, and there were loads of people that heard it, like, if you go on Twitter, a bunch of people did hear it, I, I think they were asked not to talk about it, but... It's out there on Twitter, in the public now, so yeah, it's very likely that Joe Martin's Doctor and Sasha are two people in this centenary special. The events that lead up to Thirteen's death are still a mystery, but it's probably going to have something to do with those two. Now, apparently, this regeneration may be like no other, because according to the episode's director, Jamie Magnus Stone, the production team have a crucial change in the usual style of regeneration that could have some significant effects. So, the first thing up there... Sorry to interrupt the video, Joe from the future here. All I want to say is if you are enjoying, please do subscribe, comment, help out the channel. January's a pain for ad revenue, so anything you could do would be appreciated. Please subscribe. Yeah, back to the video. I'm wondering about aesthetical changes. Like, obviously, we'll discuss it in a bit, but there's bigger changes. But aesthetical in New Who, we always get the orange glow, like their hands go and they burst with fire, just like David Tennant, Matt Smith, Capaldi, everyone. They all get that big glow. I mean, the closest we had was the actual regeneration of Matt Smith to Capaldi, where it was just like a white flash and then he came in, but he still got that orangey glow on top of the clock tower. So I'm wondering if, in a more classic vein, they're going to change up the regeneration effect. I mean, Chibnall does like to leave his mark on the show and change things about, and also harken back and reference the classic era, so it would make sense for him to do a new regeneration effect, and to be honest, that may, might be quite cool. Anyway, the article continues, I'm very fortunate in that I'm directing the last one of them, so I'm actually doing her regeneration. That's what Jamie says to the Times. Basically, her last day of filming was most of the crew's last day of filming as well, so it was all orchestrated to have this big final last day, and we shot that last day for Jodie in story order. First up, I want to say that's really cool. Like, if I was ever, like, I I'm hoping to get into TV production one day, I would love to do that sort of thing, because they've worked on this project for like five years, Three series, loads of cast members, loads of crew, people have gone, people have left, people have joined, and at the end of it, Jodie and Amanda did deserve a lot of credit, because they are the two people that have solidified this era, and yeah, the Thasmin arc is probably happening as well, that's something else that we need to discuss. 
narratively, the sadness, I think, is going to be become, like, apparent because of Thasmin. Obviously, the tears were there in real life because it's an emotional experience, but that's another thing to consider for this regeneration. The Doctor and Yaz end up alone together. We've seen pictures from this centenary special of Bradley Walsh and Dan... <laughs> Bradley Walsh and John Bishop playing Graham and Dan going and having a conversation together, so my betting is that they're going to start some new unit or Torchwood or something. The 13th Doctor will drop them off home, but her and Yaz will fly off to wherever she's going to regenerate. Maybe she drops Yaz off just before leaving, but I don't know. We'll just continue with the article. Some Thasmini stuff's going to happen, almost definitely. But what is this new twist we're teasing? Well, Stone revealed that, unusually, the Doctor's big change would not take place in the TARDIS, noting that the iconic blue box time machine was used for a late scene, but the crucial regeneration scene was filmed elsewhere. So, he says that everybody clapped her, and Mandip, actually, they clapped both of them, everybody clapped them into the TARDIS for their last time, and there were some tears. And yeah, that makes sense. We did get a filming picture way back of Jodie and Mandip on the TARDIS together from their last day of filming. So it was probably, yeah, that was what he's talking about. And then we went out to film basically her regeneration. Now already the weirdi the weirdi <laughs> the wording of that is strange. Basically her regeneration. How can it basically be her regeneration? Is it her regeneration or is it not her regeneration? It's already interesting ground. And the last shot that we did, I think, will be the last shot in the episode as well. So it was really nice to do things in sequence, and it was mostly Jodie and Mandip's scenes on the last day, so it was just super emotional. And the fact that they've already shot the last shot in the episode does imply we aren't going to see the 14th Doctor in this regeneration. It might end with Jodie bursting into orange flames and whatnot, but we won't actually see who the new Doctor is. Maybe it'll leave it on an open-ended open -ended cliffhanger. Maybe it'll be more like Classic Who, where to end that era of the Seventh Doctor, because the show got cancelled, him and Ace just sort of walk off into the sunset. Maybe Jodie will go off into the sunset alone, or with Yaz to die, or something like that. I don't know, it's going to be very interesting to see. But while the choice of where the Doctor regenerates might not seem that significant, it is unusual for the scene to be set outside of the TARDIS environment. Now, this is correct, because, like, it's weird, and you don't think about it until it's said to you, but every regeneration of New Who has been in the TARDIS control room for some weird reason. Like... Why? It's not a problem, but it's an old trope, it's cliche, let's move on, let's give us something new. The one thing it does do, which is always useful, is it removes the prior TARDIS console room, making way for a new one, and I hope to god we don't keep the Jodie one into the new Russell era. I don't hate it, but I certainly do not love it, and I want a new change. Anyway, this article talks about classic Doctors, which also regenerated outside of the TARDIS. It also brings up the point that Usually when the Doctor regenerates out of the TARDIS, it's not by choice. The Doctor wants to regenerate in the TARDIS, but they're, like, traumatically put through something which forces them to regenerate outside of it, like the Eighth Doctor in Night of, Night of the Doctor, or the Seventh Doctor in the TV movie. So maybe Jodie's not even going to get a chance to properly say goodbye to people. Like, I don't know. This, this, is, this is interesting stuff. It's not happening in the TARDIS, so I wonder where it could be. Could it be on Gallifrey? Like, a regeneration on Gallifrey does kind of make sense, because it's, like, the whole Thomas Child stuff, that's all happened. Maybe it'll be at the Boundary, where the Doctor where the Doctor was brought into our universe, where Tech Tayoon found her, something like that. Maybe it'll be on the hill, where Ryan was trying to learn how to ride his bike. I don't know, sort of interesting stuff. But the article continues, after all, returning showrunner Russell T. Davies' new era has yet to begin filming. So could they really keep the TARDIS standing for a year just in case he wanted to use it? Um, well, I've got an answer for that. No, they didn't. We know that they dismantled the TARDIS. Like, yeah, they announced it, they took down the set. So, yeah, we've known for a while that the TARDIS would never have the 14th Doctor in. I mean, they could go to this location to shoot a final shot of the 14th Doctor. Maybe they'd do something like in Day of the Doctor, where you see Christopher Eccleston's eyes, uh, despite him not actually being on set. Maybe they'll do something like that. Or maybe we just won't see 
the 14th Doctor in the episode, which then begs the question of what if the reason we're not seeing the 14th Doctor is because it leads into the 60th anniversary specials, which have been rumoured to be led by David Tennant, possibly David Tennant and Catherine Tate at the same time. If we don't see the 14th Doctor, that would make sense to give, like, the 60th anniversary celebration to past or prior Doctors. Like, that that makes sense. And maybe you even have the 60th anniversary be a story about how Jodie's regeneration's gone wrong and the previous Doctors need to come in, save the day so that the 14th Doctor can be born or something like that. That might be a bit too fan fiction-y, but oh well. He ends the article off talking about how it was the end of an era and it all worked out really nicely. I think everything we shot that day is going to be absolutely lovely and I can't wait to show you guys. So yeah, that is it for this article and that is it for today's video. As ever, if you did enjoy, please do remember to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Drop a comment as well because it all helps out the algorithm and if you want me to keep making Doctor Who news etc, just let me know in the comments down below. Please also check out our Doctor Who fan film Echoes End. Link in description, we put so much work into it, you've heard this all before. Thank you for watching and good bye.